Is old wine better? No. This is a video I've been meaning to do for a while now, and it's a surprisingly complicated topic when you're trying to figure out when is the ideal time to drink this wine that I have. You know, maybe somebody bought you a nice bottle of wine for your wedding and you're thinking, you know, let's open this on our 20th anniversary. Well, that might be a terrible idea to be honest, but it, maybe it's not. And today I'm gonna try to go through some guidance as to how long can that wine make it? Is, it? is it a wine that should be opened young or is it a wine that maybe it should go, you know, 10 years before it's opened? I've simplified these into a couple flow charts that I've made available on my Patreon page, patreon.com slash make wine. So if you support the home winemaking channel there, you can download those and it is a nice little guideline. You can kind of follow it and see, you know, where your wine is that you're sitting in, you have sitting in front of you. I'm going to break it down into a few categories, wines that should be drank, you know, really young, wines that might make it a few years, and then this next range up that can go from anywhere from a couple years to 50 years. And of course, there's always exceptions, so don't take it as gospel, but this will hopefully point you somewhat in the right direction. When we go to that first category of wines that should be drank really pretty young, the wines that you're gonna find in that category are gonna be your rosés, and I'm also gonna put sweet wines in this category, and I'm not talking about things like sweet fortified wines, like your ports, I'm talking about just your sweet, easy drinking table wines. Now the reason a rosé really isn't intended to be aged is a lot of that character that you get in a rosé is gonna come from these esters produced during fermentation by the yeast. And these esters are really, really volatile. They do not like to stick around. So they get these tropical notes. They're really fruity. They smell incredible. But even after a year, they really start to go away. And you get into two years and you don't have much left in that wine a lot of the time. It's just a pretty neutral wine. And it's just not going to drink as well as it drank back at, you know, eight months to a year. And this is okay. These wines are kind of intended to be drank young. And the way a rosé is made is usually it's a byproduct of a red wine. You'll pull some juice off after it's got just a little bit of skin contact time and it gives it that pink color. And if you're not going to pull it off as a byproduct of red wine, wine making, you'll just take those red grapes and press them after letting it sit on the skins crushed for, again, a you know, two or three hours usually. Moving up to the next category, this is gonna be white wines. And a lot of dry fruit wines would fall into a category like this as well, like a dry apple hard cider. Most white wines, similarly to rosés, are generally better on the younger side. So anywhere from six months to, you know, a year and a half is usually prime for a lot of these white wines. Some variables that can increase that time are gonna be you know, how acidic is that wine? What's the pH? If it's a little bit more acidic, it can taste a little harsh when it's young and give it, you know, a little bit of time, maybe a year and a half. It can kind of come into its sweet spot and take the edge off of that wine. The, the higher acidity, especially when we're talking in terms of pH, also helps to somewhat preserve that wine. Little microbes and things, things that cause oxidation don't like to happen at these low pH is meaning high acidity. And that same goes for some of these oxidative reactions. Some more variables you can think about would be what kind of closure is on that wine. If it's got a screw cap on it, that's basically almost impervious to oxygen. They'll actually design in a little bit of permeability to these little membranes on the top of a screw cap. But that's a good way to maybe sneak a little bit more time out of that white wine. But again, it's still gonna be a little bit better, a little bit fruitier when it's young. Another wine that I'll put into this category where it's, you know, that it's just under a year to maybe about two or three years are gonna be red wines that are made from juice. And you think, well, all wines made from juice. Well, there's some red wines where they extract color from, you know, enzymes or this flash extraction process rather than actually fermenting on the skins and seeds where you're getting all this tannin from those skins and seeds, which contributes to the ageability of that wine. A factor that can 
push it up a little bit longer would be, is that wine oak aged? Oak does impart a lot of tannin. Most white wines you see are not gonna be oak aged. Maybe a Chardonnay on occasion will be oak aged and you might be able to get a few years out of that. These juice red wines, yeah, they're sometimes oak aged, but they're still probably better young. And when you get a red wine made from juice, you're usually talking at these really, really low price points. So if you get like a $8 bottle of wine, it's probably that juice wine. Now let's get into the big kahunas here. So these are gonna be the wines that you can get some age on them and sometimes a lot of age and sometimes it's actually better with a lot of age. And the wines that are gonna fit into this category are really gonna be your red wines. And now let's talk about what types of things would make a wine better older versus better younger. So the same as I've mentioned with your white wines, the how acidic is that wine, wines with a lower pH will generally age a lot longer. And when I talk low pH on a red wine, you're usually talking something like the 3.5 range versus 3.7, which most of your wines today are sitting more close to. And most wines are kind of, I won't say designed to be drank young, but they're kind of made in a way to be drank roughly at the time that you're buying that wine, unless you really get into these high price points. I've mentioned that red wines fermented on the skins do have a lot more tannin, and I mean a lot more tannin than white wine. And tannin is that bitter component that kind of causes your tongue to feel dry or your lips to feel dry when you taste that wine. That can act in some ways as an antioxidant. It can scavenge oxygen, and it also generally takes a long time to round out. So a young red wine can taste actually very, very harsh. Those tannins are very, very harsh. As time goes on, these tannins will polymerize with each other. So they'll take these, you'll have these short chain tannins and you'll polymerize into long chain tannins. And essentially you're decreasing the surface area of these chains, which theoretically could reduce the astring astringency or bitterness of that. And you do see this, this really does happen. A red wine will very, very much smooth out as time goes on. So a high tannin red wine, and I said tannin comes from skin seeds, it comes from oak aging. The berries, very small berries, you have a better skin to juice ratio when you're fermenting. So small berries like Petite Syrah. Um, these grapes, they have usually a lot of tannin and just don't drink well young, but will get better as time goes on. There's another component of acid. I mentioned pH, but when you start to get into these longer aging periods, you start to also think about something called titratable acidity. So instead of the strength of the acids, when we talk about pH, this is kind of the sum of the amounts of the acid measured in grams per liter. And this is a better indication of how tart does that wine taste? So these wines with a high titratable acidity can taste a little bit acidic, you could say, at a young age. But what happens over time is this esterification process. So you can lose a gram per liter or so of tartaric acid through this esterification into ethyl bitartrate, which can again give you this more smooth wine. Most red wines will have undergone malolactic fermentation. That can also help things age longer because there's no malic acid in the wine anymore. And malic acid is something that a lot of microbes really like to consume. You generally would think higher alcohol content would lead to better ageability. And in some cases that could be true. Like you think of your whiskeys, they're really inert basically because there's such high alcohol. Well, in wine, there's some, it's kind of a more tricky conversation when we talk about that because alcohol can kind of act as a solvent. It can kind of help break things down. So you're really getting most of your ageability more from acid than alcohol. And you're thinking these wines really are generally stable if they're going into the bottle. The wines that make it really, really long, like if you hear about these wines from the 1800s that people open and they're still drinkable and 
I mean, it's incredible, but these wines of that are really still drinkable are usually from cooler years where those grapes are picked a little bit less ripe, which leads to higher tannin. It also leads to higher acidity and lower alcohol. So it kind of creates this perfect storm to age forever. And I'll, not really forever, but for a very, very long time. When you start to get into these super long aging periods, that's when you start having to think about cellaring conditions so how was this wine stored? What was the temperature? Was the temperature consistent? So cool, consistent temperature really helps a wine make it a lot longer. If the temperature is fluctuating, you can almost pump air in and out of that cork. And that leads me to my next thing, which is closure or cork, or I, nowadays it could even be a screw cap. So what's the quality of that? Corks are rated from you know, grade one, grade two, grade, th grade three. And at these better grades of cork, they are, they seal up really, really good. So you're getting just a really great seal. You're not gonna have the wine kind of working its way up that cork and eventually breaking the seal. So let's put together the perfect wine that would age really, really long. It's gonna be a dry, red wine usually. It's gonna have high acid. It's gonna have a lot of tannin. It's gonna have a lot of usually oak. It's probably gonna not really taste very good young. So those first few years of that wine's life, it's gonna be maybe a little bit harsh, maybe not something that you're really digging. But these are actually the wines that are gonna make it. They're gonna make it 10 plus years, maybe 20 years, and maybe in some really, really rare occasions beyond 20, 30, 40, even 50 years. Should you age that bottle of wine that you bought when your son or daughter was born or that somebody got you for your wedding? Nine times out of 10, no. <laughs> Unless this is a wine that is, again, meeting all these conditions, which usually they won't put a bottle on the shelf if it hits all those conditions because it's just too harsh. They're gonna to try to probably let that cellar in the winery until it's really ready to be sold. At least nowadays, that's generally what's happening. I hope this helped you out in your question of is old wine better? And I, and I think this is a question that almost everybody that gets into winemaking has at some point or that even gets into drinking wine is like, I think I'm gonna put this on the shelf and age it for 10 years and I think it'll be better. Well, it's not always the case. If you like videos like this and you want to learn more about winemaking especially, make sure to click subscribe below and click the bell to be notified for more videos. You can also find more content on my website, smartwinemaking.com. Thanks for watching.